It has been said that one Mark Garrison, being of sound mind and body, <laughs> and even in this capacity, has decided to throw his well-known name and civic-minded savvy into the political boxing ring of federal politics. Namely, he is announcing today's intention to seek the nomination of the Federal Liberal Party for Kingston and the Islands. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming. How's it going? Thanks for coming. Oh, my favorite. Right here. Thank you very much represents. for coming. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. Neil, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Ian? Dan, thanks for coming. We're seeking the nomination for the federal riding of Kingston and the Islands uh, in the, the next election. Privilege and pleasure for me now to call upon Mark to address you and tell all of us why uh, he deserves the support of the members of the Liberal Party of Canada in Kingston and the Islands. So Mark, welcome and congratulations. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, and uh, thank you to Chris Wyman uh, yeah. for his cry after four years of being introduced by Chris. Uh, at various events throughout the city. I couldn't imagine not being introduced again here today by Chris. So, so thank you to our world-renowned uh, town crier, Chris Wyman. And I am uh, absolutely humbled and honored to see so many familiar friends and faces here. Um, it is uh, a delight that uh, you've taken time for, to come and join uh, Vanessa Mason and I. Who, but does Mason not look good, by the way? It's one thing to worry about your competition, but then when you start thinking they might be living under the same roof as you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Today we celebrate the wave of positive change led by the Liberal Party of Canada. Today I ask you to help me become the next member of Parliament for Kingston and the Islands. Since I announced my intention to seek the federal liberal nomination, I have received an outpouring of support from the community. Over the last several weeks, I have been listening to you, and you have shared your vision for a strong community, a community filled with opportunity, where life is affordable and everybody has the ability to prosper. As Canadians, we are united and motivated by the desire for a better life for ourselves and our children. Canada is a nation built on diversity, a nation built on the foundation of immigrants. In fact, unless you are of direct Aboriginal descent, we are all immigrants to Canada. And I am no exception to this. Both my parents migrated to Canada, brought to this great country by their parents following the Second World War. In fact, my father's story of how he came to Canada clearly demonstrates the desire his parents had to create better lives for themselves and their children. And I would like to share that story with you today. In Holland, my grandparents were the proud parents of three children. They lived in a quaint apartment above a general store they ran as a family business. When World War II broke out, and with the invasion of Holland, it became ter a terrifying concern of my grandfather that he might be taken from his family with the real possibility of never returning home. When the war finally ended, my grandfather, after spending years of, in hiding, three years in hiding, and after uh, hiding in fear and desperation, he was finally free. But the next part is perhaps the most inspiring. My grandfather finally witnessed something he had been longing for, compassion. And you see, Holland was liberated by Canada. And upon my grandfather's liberation, he encountered the compassion of the peacekeeping Canadian soldiers marching through the streets of Amsterdam. He witnessed Canadian kindness and empathy and instantly thought, that's where I want to live, where these people are from. My mother's story is equally inspiring. A tale of two young Italian parents who were looking for the opportunity to provide a better way of life for their seven children. 
That longing also brought them to Canada. But the stories I share today with you are not uncommon. A desire to live in a free country filled with opportunity and prosperity is a common thread in the stories people share with me time and time again. I believe this desire for positive change and the promise of a better life is what unites Canadians and continues to inspire us today in the way we live in the best country in the world. Thank you. Because as different as everyone in this room may be, we all share the same desire of creating a better life for our children and their children. This is why I love Canada. This is why I'm seeking the Liberal nomination. And this is why it's time for change. I will be honest though, I am concerned. I am concerned about the direction our country is heading being led by Stephen Harper. His party has been in power for nine long years, during which time we have seen again and again the dismantling of these great values my grandparents, your grandparents, sought out in Canada. What happened to the peacemaking country Canada used to be? What happened to the Canada built on protecting and providing for each other while also encouraging individuals to fulfill their own, to their own potential? Since when does our Canada stop caring for the most vulnerable and providing basic needs such as affordable housing? Since when does our Canada neglect to provide the necessary infrastructure to keep our highways moving and our economy growing? Since when does our Canada sit at the bottom of the list of nations committed to environmental protection and sustainability? And since when does our Canada create tax benefit schemes that provide assistance only to the wealthy? Friends, enough is enough and it is time for change. The Liberal Party of Canada now has a dynamic leader who is dedicated to bringing the right people to the table to make the best decisions together, responsible to the people of Canada. When I first met Justin Trudeau, I was impressed by his commitment and his vision to bettering the lives of all Canadians. When he visited Kingston last year, a number of you here today heard him speak about his commitment to the principle of a fair balance between the economy and social justice. He is committed to a collaborative approach that is built on discussion and compromise through democratic government. Justin offers a fresh change to the tired, negative approach we have seen come from the Harper government over the past several years. I believe Canadians are tired of Harper's top-down, centrist approach, where even the MPs in his own caucus don't feel free to speak their minds. And in fact, under the Harper government, despite the best efforts of Peter Milliken and Ted Shu, Kingston and the Islands has too often been forgotten and neglected. Harper's government closed the Kingston Penitentiary, giving less than 24 hours notice to inform the employees and their families. His, gov his government neglected responsibilities in managing federal properties along Kingston's waterfront, such as the Marine Museum, the coal dock in Lake, near Lake Ontario Park, or the mess that's being created right here in the fenced off area near, in Portsmouth Olympic Harbor. His government, <clears throat> uh, his government has repeatedly ignored calls to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities for a national housing strategy which would work to relieve the high housing costs we experience right here in Kingston. His government has failed to provide sufficient infrastructure funding to assist in the rebuilding of the aging infrastructure throughout Canada, especially right here in our community, a region that helped build this country. The Harper government is out of touch with what we need in our community and our country. We cannot afford to continue to have our priorities ignored. We cannot afford this government, and it's time for change. It is because of my concern for these and other changes and their looming consequences that I put my name forward to represent you as the next Member of Parliament. Yeah. 
I want, I want to help build a better Canada, a better Kingston and the Islands. I want to build the kind of country and community we can be proud of, where people have access to the programs and services they need, where the decisions we make help our future generations, not harm them. I want to take the experiences I have gained over the past eight years at the municipal level and use those to better serve our community, this time at the national stage. I want to help reset the direction of our country based on the guiding liberal values of integrity, dignity, compassion, responsibility, and reason. As mayor, I had the opportunity to lead and build our community in a variety of ways. Under my leadership, the city of Kingston picked up the slack of the federal government and invested $10 million over four years into affordable housing right here in Kingston. This assisted people from across the economic spectrum, whether through social housing or affordable mortgages, into financial situations where they were not just indebted to, but rather given the tools to get on their feet and realize their full potential. I worked to invest in our young people by introducing free public transit passes for high school students, encouraging our youth to increase in their independence and involvement in our community while at the same time promoting environmental sustainability. I led the charge for a World Health Organization approved age-friendly plan that focused on building community that puts the growing number of seniors in our region at the forefront when making decisions by City Council. And I worked with my colleagues around the Council table to bring in the lowest tax rate since the City of Kingston amalgamated in 1998 without affecting a single service delivered to the people of Kingston. So ladies and gentlemen, the time has come and the time is now. It's time to give Canadian families relief from a government that is out of touch with their priorities. It is, thank you Mason. <laughs> it is time to invest in affordable housing, creating a national housing strategy. It's time to restore the collaborative approach to, the, to government built on discussion and compromise. It's time to create tax policy, policies that benefit all Canadians, not just the wealthy. It's time to restore the balance between social justice and the economy. It's time to engage and unleash the potential of our young people and restore their faith in government. It's time to secure adequate federal funding for important infrastructure projects right here in Kingston and the Islands. It's time to reclaim our position in the world as leaders in environmental protection and sustainability. It's time for change. So ladies and gentlemen, this is why I am asking you to put your faith in me to take our agenda to the national stage. Let me be your change. I am asking you to join me in a new era of federal politicians who will uphold the liberal values we hold so dearly. I am asking you to elect me the next candidate of the Liberal Party for Kingston and the Islands. I want to listen to you. I want to work, to you, work for you. I want to build a new positive movement right here in our community. Let's move forward together. Join me. It's time. <laughs>